All right, so I have a question for you because I am convinced that this is the, one of the most misunderstood things in like the rules of the road. Mm -hmm. If two people at a two-way stop, both mm -hmm. like come up to a two-way stop, you know, there's, there's a cross street that has no stop sign. Who has the right of way at the stop signs? Who gets to go first? It's supposed to be who gets there first, right? Not at a two-way stop. This is where I'm going with this. Because if one person's turning left and the other person's going straight or right, whoever's going straight or right has the right of way no matter when they arrived. Okay. Like it's not the first person. And there is one of these two way stops like right outside my house. And it absolutely grinds my gears to grab the Peter Griffin line. How many times people will just aggressively turn left across me because they arrived 10 seconds earlier or worse, do it without a turn signal because Florida. But like, yes, this is a PSA to everyone out there that arrives at a two way stop. Being first doesn't give you the right. Of, like if you're both going straight, it doesn't matter. If you're both turning right, it doesn't matter. If you're doing some combination of those two, and you're not crossing each other's path. Fine. But you don't have the right of way to go left if you arrive there first. And I feel like there's a lot of people, I don't know, just creating a lot of really dangerous scenarios if, uh, one person knows the rules and the other person doesn't. And that's my rant for the day. Oh, traffic's it's a good rant. The right of way to go left. <laughs>
seems to really enjoy it. I think it's been a slow week, uh, being the first week of school, a lot of get to know you exercises, but she, she does seem to really enjoy it so far. Uh, she's been eating cafeteria lunch, which was a big, big thing for her. She was very excited to go through the cafeteria line and they have options and all sorts of things. And so we thought it was going to be a great week, but then Tuesday and Wednesday, we started noticing our house getting really hot. And for those of you that didn't catch the cold open, I live in Florida and it's August. And so hot is hot. And we don't live in the Northern part of Florida. Uh, we live about hundred miles North of Miami. So very Southern and the AC was broken. We had to get it replaced. Luckily we got a fantastic AC service out here. They got it replaced inside of 24 hours from our first consultation. But then on top of that, it's been kind of like you, a, a crazy week at work where there's just been some small fires to put out, but then some very huge fires that demand my immediate attention and the other to-do list items do not go away when that happens. And then on top of all of that today, I got a message from my child's school, from my son's preschool, that there was a bomb threat. Um, this is your friendly reminder that anti-Semitism makes you a horrible person. I will not qualify that in any other way. They're specifically targeting Jewish institutions. Um, and even though my family is not Jewish, it doesn't matter. They are targeting the temple where he goes to school. It's wrong. And the fact that it was a hoax doesn't make it any better. The fact that all these innocent children had to luckily go to the library that is right next door. There is a parking lot separating the library and the school. They were fine. But um, yeah, so that was all pretty awful. And then my daughter gets home. She's been going to kindergarten. She's had dance class. She doesn't come straight home after school. So her school day starts at like 710 because the first week they want all the kids to arrive early. And even if they're not going to eat breakfast at school, go through the breakfast process so that the class can stay together uh, for the first week of kindergarten and sort of get to know the ropes a little bit before they give them a little bit more freedom. My daughter's chosen to eat breakfast at school. She thinks that's just as cool as the lunch. So she's taken to that. But that means that she goes from about 7 a.m. until about 5 o'clock when we pick her up from after school at the Y. Sometimes she goes later if she goes, to, we take her to dance class. And so she was crushing it like a champ Monday through Wednesday. And then today, Thursday, she came home and we finally got that emotional release that my wife and I had kind of been expecting since Monday. But all the other stuff had happened and we had thought we were past it. And she started breaking down. And my son was obviously he had had a chaotic day, even if he doesn't understand why he had a chaotic day. And so I just had to go in our kid's room and just like lay down. Like I was feeling tightness in my back and I like laid down. I was stretching a little bit and I was like, I just need to be away from this. My kids come in and they decide that they're going to rough house and climb all over me and treat me like a jungle gym. And my first reaction was I was about to just like yell like nobody's business. And then I just let it go. And inside of about 30 seconds, we were all laughing and having an amazing time and releasing all the stress. And my wife's in there, did daddy consent to this? And I'm like, hey, it's fine. We're great. <laughs> and we did that for like 20 minutes and nobody nice. got hurt and nobody cried. And I think we all just got a little bit of sillies and a little bit of, you know, physical movement out of our system, you know, cause they're coming at me as hard as they can. And I'm, pushing away as softly as I can to be effective and all that stuff. And so just a friendly reminder that <clears throat> I did this a lot before, but getting down and playing with your kids can sometimes end up a lot better. Even if you think it's the absolute last thing you want to do sometimes is be around them and their chaos that getting that sort of fun, playful, and even sometimes that physical release can be really good for them to get some of the stress out in a playful way. Uh, I will try to bring data on this next time because I've seen data, but I can't recite it. So I don't want to quote it, but I think there are some benefits to that kind of rough house play that doesn't result in harm or hurting or going too far for kids. But that, that was a nice sort of point in my day when I just didn't have anything in the tank and something good happened out of it. 
Good. That's nice to hear. That was a happy ending to a to a yeah. rough tale. So, um, so I'm gonna I'm kind of gonna double up because I've got two really quick stories that I uh, just want to throw in. <clears throat> so the first is you and I might be witches because last week we talked about water safety and we talked about uh, how difficult it is in outside in the DC suburbs to sign up for anything, let alone swim classes. So without knowing that this date was approaching when we recorded last week on Monday, my wife's phone starts going on the fritz and won't stay turned on, you know, sometimes instantaneously. Sometimes she got 20 minutes out of it. Anyway, this happened Monday night. She remembers at about midnight that at 6 30 AM on Tuesday, was the day to sign up for swim lessons at the new county rec center that uh, opened two blocks away from us right across from my kid's school. So I was up because her phone wasn't reliable. So I had to set her alarm on my phone. And then uh, we had done a little bit of work to get our the two classes for each of them we wanted or one class each uh, on our wish list. So that hopefully we could just go to our wish list at our, at six thirty, and get it going and sign up. So at like six twenty two, the website to register changes entirely. It just says we are now setting up the queue. You will not be allowed to enter the website until it is your turn on the queue to avoid crashing. So then it was basically a non functional website from six twenty two to six thirty. Right at six thirty. The queue begins and you've got a little walking person that shows you where you are in line of the queue. And we were right here for a long time. And luckily my wife's phone didn't die. So she had her phone on, on the Metro. I was on my laptop and when, and but we had different queue numbers. So we were hoping that between the two of us, we could sign the girls up for preschool. I mean, uh, for swim lessons. <laughs> and she got out of the queue about a minute before me. So she signed up one of them. I signed up the other one. They are both in swim last swim swim classes. Um, hilariously, uh, they are, of course, on two separate evenings. That's really not a problem considering it's like right across from school and we walk home anyways. Sure. But my daughter who is turning two will start swim lessons on, on third Tuesday of September, whereas my daughter turning five will start swim lessons on Thursday. So the younger one's going to learn how to swim first, technically. And I thought that was kind of fun. Um, well, and- I, I am interested <laughs> once they are all over, I'm interested to hear how they did. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited. And it's, uh, it should be, I think uh, the one with the, you know, 18 months to three years old, that is parent accompaniment. And then sure. the older one is not. So, you know, I guess I'm going to get some swim lessons too, in addition to when I start ballet uh, this September as well, because that is also parent accompaniment. And I'm already doing parent accompaniment for gymnastics. So I'm becoming a real athlete, a real Olympian. And there you'll you see go. me in 2028 in my hometown of Los Angeles in the parent accompaniment section. It's going to be All great. I, I, I look forward to that. And then the other short story I wanted to share was that the last few days walking my daughters to school, we have been taking the single stroller instead of the double stroller just because it rides better. So we have like a hoverboard on the back of it so my older daughter can ride. But I said, you know what? You've been like really energetic in the morning. I think you should walk to school with me. So we've been playing red light, green light. And about 30 seconds into red light, green light, my daughter said she wanted more light colors. So I said, oh, okay. Well, we're going to do pink light next. And so she's like, well, what do I do on pink light? And I said, uh, you skip. <laughs> so we play red light, green light, yellow light, pink light, orange light, black light, brown light, blue light, white light, and golden light. <laughs> and uh, get you, somebody in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I chose the weird kind of black light where you go, whoa. <laughs> and my wife goes, why wouldn't you just pick dancing like you're at a rave? I said, that's better. Blacklight, we dance. That's what we're doing. <laughs> because, because your brain doesn't work like 
your wife's normal brains. No, <laughs> you know. Anyway, Happy I invented normal. a new game. <laughs> uh well, cool, awesome. Um, that that's a that's a great way to. I, I may have to instill that with my daughter going to school if we need to, but luckily right now she is riding her bike. And so she's very preoccupied with, with doing that and, and mastering it and all that kind of stuff. So um, I, I don't have to do too much to get her energy out. Uh, I have to do a lot to make sure I'm not a puddle of sweat by the time I arrive at the door, <laughs> loosen up her backpack so that the sweat from my shirt mm. isn't soaking through her stuff. Um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Technology. So Indeed. talking about this topic, because we, as I mentioned, if you look back in our YouTube channel, website, podcast feed, we have an old episode about screen time and how we sort of try to mitigate screen time for our kids. And I think that episode is, is all things screen time. If you're being pragmatic and data driven about screen time, it's not going to come off as a glowing recommendation of plopping your kids down in front of the TV. And it's going to make technology look bad. But I started having this thought, just looking around our house at all the things we've used and all the things we've done that I'm like, there is a lot that makes our lives a lot easier. And not all of those things are just for the kids entertainment, but I figured we would sort of start at the beginning of the journey, right? Taking it from, things we used when they were infants to things that we now use now that they are a little bit older and maybe, you know, in our older daughters, older kids cases can use technology a little bit more, have some technology literacy. Um, so I'll start with one of my favorite pieces of technology that we did not use with my daughter. I wish we had tried it but we used with my son and that is the snoo bassinet. All mm. right. If you guys are not familiar with the snoo bassinet, it's spelled S N O O. And it is a fairly expensive bassinet that you put your child in and you put them in and they're attached to straps sort of at their hips and these straps and the whole thing has a motor underneath it. And when the child cries or the child gets restless, it starts rocking them, it starts rocking them to sort of relieve you from having to pick them up and coddle them and worrying about putting them down and them waking back up. And that's not to say it replaces all parenting and all those kinds of things, because if the kid's really upset and they need to feed or they've got a wet diaper, the snoo's not going to do it. But if they're just waking up and they're a little scared, the snoo can rock them back to sleep before they wake themselves up too much. There's an app there are different like settings on it. So you can dictate your noise level, how strong it, you know, how strong it rocks, you know, so you can set it to have a much lower cap for the little ones. And then as they get a little bit older, you know, six months, eight months, you can set it to go a little bit stronger because they're a little bit bigger. And at first when my wife brought this idea, I was like, these things are like $700 ballparking it here, but they're $700 um, new. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, there's no way I'm spending $700 on a bassinet when we like a cardboard box could be a bassinet if you rig it right. Mm -hmm. Well, then I found out by the time we were having our son and my wife did the research on this, but they apparently have fantastic resale value. So we ended up buying one for like $500 used sanitized it, cleaned it, used it for almost a year, kept it in good shape, sanitized it, cleaned it, sold it for like 450 bucks. So we spent go. $50 for a year of the snoo. And so I would recommend to people for a variety of reasons, reducing waste, you know, helping other parents that need to clean out their clutter, try to find it. You know, we use Facebook marketplace. There's a lot of local seller groups around where we are, but you could use anywhere that you trust to sort of buy these things um, to get one of those. I would highly recommend looking into a snoo. If you're expecting a new kid, they can be awesome. That's How about you? You got, you got anything good for babies? Yeah. So, you know, mine's a, mine's a little different. We, we did not invest in any, um, assisted bassa assisted parent bassinets all of the snoo but 
you know, you, you had, you know, about 16 months of fatherhood before the pandemic. I only had, I only had four, four months. And, you know, so for me, the biggest use of technology that we had for our kids and that carried through still, you know, today was just being able to utilize FaceTime. And I know we talked about this a little bit in our screen time episode, but that allowed for my kids to get to know their grandparents. Uh, as I mentioned earlier this episode and in others, I am from Los Angeles, so they are there, as is my younger brother. So that was a good opportunity for my daughter and now daughters to really keep up a, re a relationship with them. So I would say the first real piece of technology that we used in cultivating their lives was in fact uh, video chat. I think that can be super awesome. And I think as we mentioned in that episode, it's a little bit different than just plopping them down to watch an episode of Bluey or Daniel Tiger or something because it's interactive. Um, I think right. it sort of depends on how, how the conversation goes. We tend to cut off the conversation with grandparents when they FaceTime them uh when the kids just start playing and aren't paying attention mm -hmm. or right. are just kind of staring at the phone and waiting for their grandma or grandpa to entertain them and i'm like no no, no. this is no different than watching like some gamer stream on twitch or something like mm -hmm. you're not participating anymore now this is a tv show we're done what i will what i will say is i i, I actually misspoke before we did utilize video chat as parental assistance because there were some times when either my wife or i would throw them on the video chat and just say hey i need you to watch them because i have to go to the bathroom and i haven't had a chance yet so you know yeah. please yell if you if if i need to come back <laughs> yeah so, i mean yeah. it's it, it definitely can help and and we did that a couple of times when the kids were too much it's like hey let's call grandma so mm -hmm. i can wash these dishes in peace right um right. strap you into the high chair and let her rip so mm -hmm. i get that um the next one's kind of a gimme so i won't go too long on this but video baby monitors mm -hmm. i feel like mm -hmm. they still make audio only ones and like what are you doing with your life um, yeah. the ability to look at what my kids are doing and not just try to pick apart noises, especially at this age. I mean, mm -hmm. like I always wanted the video cause I want to see infants if they're up against the edge mm -hmm. or something like that, yep. or doing something unsafe. But now with my kids, like, it's just one of those things. Like I want to see if they're playing, I want to see if they're doing something mm -hmm. they're not supposed to be doing, uh, when, when they should be sleeping. And so, yeah. Get a video baby yeah. monitor. Well, don't cheap out. It's worth the twenty extra dollars or whatever it costs. It's. I don't even think it's even that much more. I think. Uh, it, I think in the time it takes you to find an audio only one, you've probably spent twenty dollars worth of your time. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> that's probably yeah. true. But I, I'm. I'm more thinking of like if you're making a list for a baby shower or somebody gets you. Oh one, yeah. Return the audio only one. <laughs> yeah. Take the store credit. Go get the video mm -hmm. one. Just don't, don't yeah, play. Hundred percent. I th I think that's a very, I think that's I think that's very fair. Um, and yeah, um, I think the next one we were gonna discuss was educational and entertainment uses of yeah. technology, and yeah. <clears throat> you know that one, like you said, uh, and we've also discussed way way back in season one when we mentioned. Uh, the downside to toys that make noise, the caveat is sometimes if there's an educational use to them, it isn't that bad. Like if you sure. want to, you know, if you want to entertain your kid, my parents got my daughter this really nice little like music box. And when she figured out that it's all playing the same song, but of the six, uh, it's a cube. So of the six sides you can press, it's a different S uh, it's a different um, instrument versus the entire orchestra, which is one button. She was kind of right. learning that she could hear the same thing in different ways. So that was kind of a cool way to teach her. I don't think she could tell me what an orchestra is, but she did understand that there are different instruments that sound different and can create the same kind of music. Yeah. I also, um, Oh, go ahead. No, oh. no. Keep okay. going. I, I was also going to say that on the topic of music, 
you know, teaching what has been actually really useful to my kids and teaching them how to ask for something they want, usually a song, is we use, and I'm not going to say the device's name because I don't want any of our millions of listeners to have them all turn on, but either the A-L-E-X-A or the E-C-H-O, which we actually changed it to, uh, pro tip, change your A-L-E-X-A's name to E-C-H-O because they never say that in the commercials and it won't turn on. Mm. Yeah. Nice. That's, that's, a, that's a good tip. Um, we have a Google Home device and those can be helpful for asking for things, but they can also, you have to watch those, right? Like my daughter would get in a habit where she would realize that if she said, Hey Google, tell me a joke that mm. it would tell her jokes over and over again um, until we made her stop. And so I had to go in and set up an automation where she would say that and then it would repeat no, go eat your dinner or something <laughs> like that. And just like nice. give her something back that she wasn't expecting after like five jokes. And I'm sitting there furiously typing on my phone and my wife's like, can you pay attention? I'm like, I'm parenting. Leave me alone. Nice. And then I'd, I'd be like, and then I just turn the volume all the way to zero. And mm -hmm. she'd be like, why isn't it responding? I'm like, I don't know. Like, and, or I'd, I'd play something like a button on it that would make it go, I'm going to take a nap now. And then I'd turn the volume to zero and I'd be like, oh, Google's sleeping. So nice. sometimes nice. you have to yeah. cut it off. Yeah, my daughter accidentally, I'd say about six separate times, uh, re-upped the subscription to something we didn't want. And then I get the charge. Uh, I see my phone light up that says, you've been charged $9.99. It was usually like for the Amazon prime un unlimited music which is like uh, yeah. 10 bucks a month and she they they offer you like sporadic three-month trials <clears throat> but then one time she asked for a song and it said would you like to try music unlimited for 9.99 a month and my kid just before i could say anything goes yes and then boom i got the i got the charge on my phone <laughs> I said, man yeah. that was annoying <laughs> might as well use it <laughs> Well, back to the learning things, I, I will also say that, you know, while tablets can often get a bad rap because they're a great streaming device mm -hmm. for Netflix, Disney Plus, whatever your Amazon Prime, your app of choice there, they also can have educational apps. And so very early on, my daughter's first exposure to a tablet, we didn't have one for a while, but she would use my mother-in-law's because my mother-in-law would have zoom meetings not working but like various social clubs she was in especially during COVID, they would want to get together and chat and a bunch of retired ladies were like 11 a.m on a wednesday that's when we want to do it and so she was like i want to do this and i need the kid quiet so let me give her the tablet but she set it up so that the only things that my daughter could access on the tablet were like several different games including abc mouse is the one that comes to mind that i know she utilized but then like on ours, we did the same thing. We have an Amazon Fire tablet. And with Amazon, one of the nice things that was easy that um, I don't typically see on iPads, although I haven't had one in about eight years, is the ability to set up a special kids profile. And I'm sure Apple's come out with that software now or something like it. But with the, with the Fire tablets, setting up the kids profile so I can limit their apps, they can't unlock the device without our passcode. And they get to just utilize a few things. And so we can instill this on long road trips, right? When we're traveling somewhere, like if we're going to Orlando or Tampa, we're going to be in the car for several hours. And so we might tell our daughter she can watch a TV show or watch a movie or something like that. But after that's done, we can say, okay, here's a coloring app that you actually have to like color Disney characters and mm -hmm. you can get her right in the same mood. If she watched Frozen and wants to color an Elsa picture as a result, great. It's an easy segue or a puzzle app or a learning app. And, you know, the biggest tip I would say to anybody searching for apps in that scenario is just make sure that the app is available offline <laughs> because mm -hmm. I downloaded mm -hmm. her about a dozen things to give her options that I thought would be great. And about the first eight she opened would not work without a Wi-Fi connection. And I didn't know that um, because I downloaded them on our Wi-Fi. So mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. pro tip check for that. But 
I would say definitely try to fill your kids' tablets if you if they have one with things that can be productive, right? And I mm -hmm. think we're going to transition our daughter to using the tablet a little bit more with her reading, you know, as she progresses in her reading, you know, because it's Amazon, it'll connect to our Kindle account and we'll be able to share books with her. And we have an app that we can utilize through our library to rent free eBooks and things like that and, and let her go, go hog wild. Yeah. So we, <clears throat> so I don't know what it's called, but, and I don't, and I honestly don't know if I'll ever know what it's called, but one of my daughter got a gift actually from her teacher she got them for the whole class but it is a essentially like a digital sketch pad where it's uh it's it's pink and then there's this like black screen it has a, a little stylist you draw and then you go oh look what i made and then you press a button and it wipes the screen clean and then you get to draw again and that has been really useful just it's like etch a sketch 2.0. Yeah, yeah, basically. And I, I, I don't easier know. Easier to called. use, easier to <laughs> yeah. operate. Etch yeah. Sketch the, 2.0 there. Yeah, pre pretty much. And, you know, we have something similar on the super duper hand me down iPad she has, where it's essentially just like a paint app. And the only difference is, you know, you can, she can save the one she likes. It's not like a yeah. one and done with a, with the etch a sketch 2.0 thing but you know yeah. so that's kind of like saving artwork which is you know we get way too much of that have to really yeah start i mean that's that's a whole other combo for a whole other time but yes. i'm like <laughs> i i sit there and i kind of call with a reckless abandon and my wife's sort of like oh i wanted to save that one i was like oh <laughs> you did huh okay <laughs> yeah i i very that. much I'd say three times a week, my conversation at pickup is, "You wanted, you, you wanted to take this home. You were really proud of this one." <laughs> you know, I'm just asking. You know, I'm, not, I'm no judgment. I'm just, you know, I just want to know: Are, are you, are you, you personally? <laughs> yeah, are you proud of this one? Are you sure? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. So. Um, but I, I think sort of the the last category, and maybe there's a couple others that you would want to touch on, but the last category is sort of outside of the things that directly touch the kids. But going back to Google Home, we have our setup in our kitchen. It's a fairly central location in our house. Um, so when we set timers, we utilize it for things. And I think I've mentioned this before, but I have a routine where I say, hey, Google, good evening. Uh, and Google's like, okay, setting a timer for 6.55 called cleanup. Okay, setting a timer for 7.35 p.m. called brush teeth. And then it goes off at those times. So one, my wife and I never have to scramble and go, oh, shoot, it's time to get ready for bed or it's time for cleanup. I can just say that when it when I'm cooking dinner and those timers start and they can just go until they hit. And that saves us time. And the other thing we do is we utilize it for our grocery list. So being in our kitchen, it's very easy. We run out of something. We go, hey, Google, add so-and-so to my grocery list. And it's all organized in the Google Keep app. And we just use that checklist function when we're in the grocery store, knock it off the grocery list. Don't have to write anything down. Don't make, need to make sure we have our phone with us because that's usually a problem when we're around the house. It's either charging or left at a desk or something. And as scatterbrained as parents can get, you know, if you're a parent, you're listening to this, like, 10 things could happen in the 20 feet between you and your phone that would cause you to forget that you needed to add milk to the grocery list. And then it's not on the list when you get in the store and then you're like, ah, crap, forgot the milk. So that, that has been a huge help in those sort of areas of culling the madness. I'm sure there's more we could do with it. You know, we set timers, we have routines like the bedtime one, we have one for, laundry and dryer and those kinds of things. And we've also connected it to our TV. So when the kids are like grabbing the remote and like trying to get another episode and like deciding that they're not going to listen to me saying it, I can just go, Hey Google, turn off the Roku. And then they're like, crap, dad's mm -hmm. got the override. So there, there's, there's some, there's some things in there that can, um, they can really help you out too, uh, besides just entertaining your kids with jokes and music. So what really helped me, and 
Uh, I'm going to show off the lovely uh, AirPods that I have here in my ear. I did not have AirPods when my older daughter was born. I got AirPods in between my, or the birthday right before my second daughter was born. And, you know, my Apple Watch will tell you, as it tells everybody, if you are in a situation where the decibels are too high. When we brought my new, my second daughter, my younger daughter, back from the hospital, she was reaching decibels that my watch was saying, you are in an unsafe environment. When I would pick her up to rock her when she was crying, I really felt like I needed to end things because I couldn't stand the sound anymore. I then remembered the noise cancellation function okay. and I popped these in and all I could hear was the bare minimum to just know that she is in fact still crying. And so this helped me not go crazy when I was rocking her to sleep as a brand newborn, just trying to make it through the evening without just being like, you know what? Don't care anymore. And just letting her go. But the AirPods really saved the day there. I, I have to second that. I use them during the day. I connect them to my work computer and I can noise cancel them. And so today when there was an AC guy, you know, installing a whole unit and I had a loud box fan by my desk. I had those things in and I couldn't hear a sound. And I was on video chats with coworkers and they're like, we can't hear anything. So that does a great job on the microphone. But even if the kids are home, uh, whether they're home sick or they're home early or there's no school or camp that day, it's also a big godsend. But in a cruel twist of fate, the reason I don't wear them is because my MacBook is too old and they won't actually effectively connect. They drop out about every five seconds, go in and out on my MacBook, but they do great with my Windows PC. So gotta yeah. love technology. Yeah. 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 Uh any other any other tech you wanted to to tout? Uh, you know, I don't I don't think so, actually. I think that we kind of covered everything. Obviously, you know. We talked about, you know, the positive side. Uh, I think that there are nice moments that we have as a family in front of the TV, uh, whether that be watching a movie, an episode of Bluey together, or, you know, just the Olympics. Unfortunately, we've pretty much had to cut out all TV uh, with my kids the last uh, couple of weeks because, you know, I don't know what it is, but... The last couple days that my daughter, the older one, watched TV, after the fact, she just, her behavior went to went to shiz it. And, uh, you know, the noticeable difference when she doesn't. And it doesn't really make that much sense, like, logically, because she asked to watch TV. We said, okay. She chose what she wanted to watch. Yeah. The nice calm. It probably and it's like, so why are you, why are you acting, why are you acting terribly? Yeah. <laughs> we do everything you wanted it's it's a lot of I, I think a lot of that's just like a dopamine reaction where they're they're getting the high of getting the show and then they're crashing and they're crashing hard and if they weren't in a good mood beforehand they're going to be in a worse mood and we we do that a lot with with my daughter and luckily my daughter has started to understand because I've talked to her about it not in the moment I've talked to her at other times about sort of what screen time can do to your brain. And I've explained to her things like what dopamine is and that it affects everybody. Um, and it's something I've become keenly aware of since I got diagnosed with ADHD, which is like a dopamine producing deficiency. So you tend to seek it out more and you have to notice those behaviors. And so I've become hyper aware of my own and therefore I see it in, you know, everybody when they're doing it. And so I've talked to her about it and she sort of understands it. That doesn't mean she wants TV any less, but she's also like helping her understand when I cut her off for after, you know, two episodes or three episodes, I usually try to keep a 90 minute cap on weekends. There's none on the weekdays just because time constraints and all that stuff like the TV would be running too close to bedtime. But on the weekends, I try to keep it at a cap at 90 minutes. One, because then her brother can nap during that time. Two, that's the length of a feature film. And three, 
any more than that. And she just kind of becomes a gremlin. So, yeah, there are apps out there for those of you that are utilizing a tablet for your kids screen time, where I know you can set timer functions, daily limits, you can control it from your devices. So you can up their limits if you wanted to use it as a reward for, you know, doing their chores or getting their homework done or eating all of their, you know, eating a good breakfast or whatever you're trying to reward and incentivize. I would also highly recommend that we don't utilize it. We just kind of set timers on our watches or our phones or whatever, or, or our Google home. And that tends to work for us, but you know, you, you can do it manually. If you're the type of person that doesn't forget and go, how long have they been on that thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Should we get on, should we work on the dad bot a little bit? Yeah, let's work on it. <clears throat> so I mentioned you know, a couple of weeks ago that coming back from my, you know, resort style vacation at my in-laws was, you know, set, set me back a bit, but so I'm going to, I'm going to give a, uh, so when we, when we came back, you know, I had the 190 pound episode, then a week later was 187.8. And then this new week was 186.6. So my reversion to the mean is going as it should be. Hopefully I'm steadily getting back down. That means I've got 11.6 more pounds to go to hit my goal weight. I have been exercising not as much only because it is really hot and it's harder to run that full distance. I also, well, I've also, but in the, at the same time, I've been, working pretty hard at stuff. So I've been forgetting to eat. So, you mm. know, I think I'm having a little less calories throughout the day, which yeah. is not good. Don't get me wrong. No, it's definitely. No. Off, it definitely offset the, you know, the calories I, I consume working from home. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I No, I get that. And I, I have been for me um, this week, I actually noticed when I weighed in yesterday that last week, I think I was at 172.8. And then this weekend I was like at 173.8 and I was like, okay, fine. Normal fluctuations. I would maybe get slightly just like watch yourself if I got to 175, Um, you know, not actively trying to lose weight or panicking about it, but just like watching the trend lines. And then yesterday morning, or no, this morning I got on the scale and I was 171 and I was like, I was really tired. Right. And I had slept pretty well, despite all the chaos, I had slept fairly well for me during the week. And we could probably do a whole episode on better sleep habits. Um, more of a do as I say, not as I do kind of thing, knowing how we both sort of treat sleep. But I had this realization that what was happening is I started walking my daughter to school. She's on a bike. She's on a bike with training wheels. She's not super fast, but by that standard, she gets going down a hill. She can absolutely get a couple driveways ahead of me and I have to jog to keep up. It's about two thirds of a mile there and two thirds of a mile back. Well, on Monday, I was still trying to figure out how I get this bike back from school. There's bike racks, they're fenced in, but she gets on a bus to go to the YMCA after school. So I have to get the bike back. And day one, I had a luggage strap hooked to this thing over my shoulder and I'm hoofing it back two thirds of a mile, which is not long when you're walking, but when you're walking with a kid's bike and it wasn't, you know, it's not a tiny little light balance bike Mm -hmm. either. I'm like, okay, this is about like carrying my son this whole distance right now. Mm -hmm. It's staying and I was drenched again. It's Florida. I'm sticky by the time I get out to the end of the driveway to put her on the bike in the morning. And so- I ended up adjusting and doing something different, but I noticed my heart rate was getting up way more, even just tug towing the bike behind myself. My heart rate was getting up way more than it would on a normal walk. And I'm like, okay, well, what happens then is my heart rate's up. I come back, I gather my stuff for the gym. I take my son, I go straight to the gym. My heart rate hasn't like completely come down. I do my weightlifting session and my baseline heart rate has just been up and elevated and it stays up there and it's easier to get higher. And so I'm noticing as I'm tracking on my watch that I'm burning for the same workout that I was doing last week 
like a hundred more calories in 40 minutes. Plus the walk that I had, you know, I had stopped doing a lot of like outdoor walks just because of the summer heat and time. And like, I didn't feel like I needed to add them to my weight loss journey because I'm not trying to lose weight. And now I'm like, okay, I'm adding in all this physical activity and my weightlifting workouts are burning more calories and all this stuff. I don't think I'm adjusting my calories appropriately. I've had some stuff at work where I have to remind myself, oh crap, this is my time to go eat lunch or else I don't have lunch for another 90 minutes because of meetings and what have you. And then just also going, okay, I, I think like I'm burning, you know, instead of being in the 500 to 600 calorie range, I'm like, well, now I'm in the thousand calorie range of burned calories. And if I'm not making that up somewhere, fine. And so I was like, okay, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I think it might just be that I don't have enough food in my system. And so this morning, partly because the AC was broken, it's like I had my breakfast and then I had some cashews and then I had some chocolate ice cream at 1030 between meetings. Cause I was like, you know what? That's going to keep me cool. (laughs) And I am, well, not even I deserve it, but like, kind (laughs) of like my body needs some calories and I just want to get a bunch in there in case I do something stupid later and forget lunch. And then I had a healthy lunch and I had a healthy dinner and I might have a snack after we get done with this, but I'm like, you know, it's, it's still like, I haven't been tracking the calories just because it's another thing on the to-do list that I kind of forget. And because I'm not at a point with my weight where I'm like trying to actively lose it. Um, and this was not actually going to be what I was ta- going to talk about on this segment, but then that happened today. And I was like, okay, friendly reminder when, when things get hectic, it's really actually easy to under eat, especially if you're doing a lot of extra physical activity that you weren't expecting and that physical activity, yeah. you know, because previously I do a weightlifting workout and then maybe I'd go for a lunchtime walk. And those things are so separated that each one of them is burning two thirds the calories it does now when I'm just kind of in a state of constantly being warmed up and ready to go from 7 a.m. until 9 a.m. So there you go. There you go. Nice. All right, guys. Well, I think that's all we've got tonight. Nice, tidy, under 50 minute episode. Shout out to Chad GPT for getting it right on the time. Um, Partly because we probably skipped over a couple sections that we didn't think were super relevant to us, but we hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a reminder to look at our screen time episode that we did back in season one. Uh, I think that was one of my favorites that we did just talking about some of the data and some of the facts around screen time and busting a couple of myths in there and make sure you like, and subscribe to the podcast and share with a friend who you want to put a smile on their face. Um, Share something else with them. So you actually can, but share this first. Yeah. And just for those of you who might be confused, we are not artificial intelligence. Chat GBT is just the name of our intern. That's all. We are real people coming to you on a real podcast. Yeah. Your left ears glitching. I think the pixels are off. See you guys. Thanks for working on the dad pod with us. Any resources that we mentioned during the show will be in the show notes. If you have questions, thoughts, or just want to talk with us, the best place is in the comments on YouTube. We're on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at working on the dad pod and on Twitter at working on dad pod. Following and subscribing is always appreciated. Please rate and review us. That helps get the show to new people. And if you know a dad who would enjoy our show, sharing it with them is a huge help to them and us. Have a great week.